Hey Fanshaw, the video you're about to watch does include information around HIV, STIs, as well as a rapid HIV test done on camera, which does show blood. There will be a warning that pops up on the video, so you're able to skip ahead if you'd like to, but we encourage you to look after yourselves in the best way that you know how. If you do require any support following the video, you can reach out to the Counseling and Accessibility Services Office. The information will be available in the caption. Stay safe, Fanshaw. Hi everyone, welcome to FSU Ask. Today we have JP here from the Options Clinic and we're gonna be talking to JP about the services that the Options Clinic provides. We're really fortunate at Fanshaw because we have Options Clinic on campus once a month to do rapid HIV testing for students. And so we wanted you to know what that looks like, ask JP some questions that we frequently get asked by students so you can access this information maybe before you decide to pop in for a test. So thanks so much for joining us, JP. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate being here. Of course. Can you tell us a little bit about what Options Clinic is and the services that you provide? Absolutely. So the Options Clinic is one of the programs at London Intercommunity Health Centre. Uh, so we're primarily an organization that focuses on people who are experiencing marginalization and barriers to healthcare. Um, and the Options Clinic is our anonymous HIV testing program. So we offer in-house testing um, where people can either book appointments or walk in. Uh, as well, we do a lot of outreach. So for example, coming here to Fanshawe, uh, and we go out all over the community and even outside of the community a little bit to just kind of bring testing uh, to the folks so that they don't always have to come in. So for sure, anybody who kind of just wants to get a test is more than welcome to come in. Uh, we never turn anybody away. Um, we're a very non-judgmental and very affirming uh, group of people, I would like to say. So um, no matter what you might be feeling or kind of the stigmas that there is in society, we'll do our best to, to work together with you to make it as comfortable as possible. But for sure, we want to see anybody who kind of engages in injection drug use, we'd love to see. Um, and then basically anyone who's kind of sort of sexually active. It is recommended at least once in your life to be uh, tested for HIV. Um, but especially if you are somebody who kind of has multiple partners, maybe doesn't necessarily uh, use condoms every single time, um, it would be recommended to come in. Uh, as well, we have our priority populations for HIV. Um, so these are groups of people that we tend to see higher rates of HIV in, and that includes um, men who have sex with men, uh, people who use injection drugs, which I mentioned before, people who are part of the African, Caribbean, and Black communities, uh, as well as uh, people in Indigenous communities. Now, that doesn't mean to say that if you are part of that community, you are put at high risk, but for example, if you are somebody who kind of engages in having multiple partners and is part of one of those communities, it is recommended that we'd like to see you uh, at the Options Clinic. You had mentioned that folks can come down to Intercommunity Health to receive a test or they can meet you somewhere in the community, but specifically for Fanshawe students, we have the Options Clinic that is available once a month um, in the Wellness Center. Now, um, folks don't have to make an appointment for the test, but could you maybe just tell us a little bit about what it would look like when they walk in the door and, and it's your face that they see, so that's really helpful that we have you here so students yeah. know who you are. Yeah, so students can obviously expect to see my face. Um, we usually have a little table set up that has a lot of resources um, for HIV testing, transmission, um, different prevention methods, so how you can protect yourself against um, HIV transmission. Uh, and then we always have free condoms, free lube, um, and I always recommend to take the free lube because lube's expensive. Um, we and give then, out free lube as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then, yeah, you usually just see me there uh, sitting. Sometimes I might have um, somebody with me from a different organization uh, just there to kind of give some education pieces while I do the testing. Um, and then we'll always have a private room for testing. Uh, we never ask for your real name. We don't ask for a health card. It's entirely anonymous. Um, and we, we do it all in a private room. Uh, how it works is we kind of sit you down, I explain the process a little bit, we do a bit of a risk assessment, um, and then it's just a finger prick, and then you're usually out of there in five to 10 minutes. And then you get your results the same day as well, so there's no kind of waiting uh, and having that anxiety as you wait for your results, which normally take about a week for a standard blood draw. 
So obviously the uses of condoms, you know, for the sexual transmission of HIV is recommended, as well as just kind of having frank conversations with your sexual partners. It might be a little bit awkward kind of asking people if they've been tested for STIs or whatever, but it is super important to kind of just have that knowledge and start that conversation because it kind of makes it easier the more you do it. Um, as well, there's uh, a lot of more new medications that are out right now that people can actually take to help prevent the HIV transmission. So there's a medication called PrEP, it stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis, um, and it's a daily pill that you just take once a day and it just helps prevent uh, the transmission of HIV. It's 99.9% .9 effective uh, with very little side effects and it's usually covered under most public and private healthcare plans, but there are a lot of organizations that offer um, a lot of subsidies that will give it to you for free if you're not covered. Awesome. Um, and we're able to kind of give all of that information at the options clinic through um, conversations and pamphlets and things and can help get people connected. There's a lot of organizations in London that offer that uh, kind of prescription service. So the Middlesex London Health Unit is one as an example, um, as well as uh, Regional HIV AIDS Connection, which is our AIDS service organization here in London. Um, and then as well at London Intercommunity Health Center, um, we have a nurse practitioner who is also able to prescribe PrEP to people who want that. And I know sometimes there's some misconceptions and stigma around who can access some of these um, harm reduction methods. So any gender or non-conforming gender folks can access PrEP, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, definitely there's that misconception because PrEP is kind of marketed towards queer men specifically, um, but it's beneficial to everybody. Um, so but yeah, any gender, any human is able to take PrEP and I 100% recommend it. Um, especially if you can get it for free because it's just one extra thing that you don't necessarily have to worry about. Yeah, I love that you talked about having those conversations about being tested because I think it's something that we're not taught to do and we're not really given the language or the ways to have those conversations. So um, it can even be something on campus where you come with your partner and um, get tested or potential partner if that's a conversation you're having. So there's actually only kind of five bodily fluids that can transmit HIV. Um, so that includes blood, semen, uh, which includes pre-cum, vaginal fluid, rectal fluid, and breast milk. Um, so there's kind of misconceptions that like, if I kiss somebody that has HIV, or if I share a cup with somebody that has HIV, I'm putting myself at risk. Um, no, unless that person is like profusely bleeding from their mouth, um, there's no risk at all. Um, or through saliva or through sweat or any of that type of uh, those types of fluid it has to be the five that I mentioned before um, and there also has to be some sort of activity involved so whether that be using injection drugs or through sex and it also has to be with somebody who is living with HIV um, and it's typically somebody that's living with HIV that doesn't know that they have it which is why getting tested is so important because there are symptoms for HIV, um, but they are very similar to flu-like symptoms, so it's not always easy to determine, um, and not everybody experiences them. So the only way to really know is to come and get tested. Another misconception is that um, people who are living with HIV have a very low life expectancy and life quality. Um, and that's not the case anymore. Nowadays, the treatment options are significantly better than they used to be. Before, it was like you had to take like 16 pills a day. Now it's usually just a couple medications combined into one pill a day with very few side effects. Um, and folks who are on effective treatment can actually live a very long and healthy life in comparison to people who do not have HIV. And as well, there's a, a, a campaign that's going on right now called U Equals U. And essentially what that means is un uh, undetectable equals untransmittable. So folks who have an undetectable viral load, so essentially what that means is somebody's living with HIV, um, but the amount of the virus in their blood is so low that it can't be detectable on a viral load test. And folks who reach that status actually cannot transmit HIV to their sexual partners, even if they're not wearing a condom. So you can have sex with somebody who has HIV, you can live a long and healthy life if you're living with HIV and you don't have to really worry about it, so long as you're getting tested and making sure that everything is uh, maintaining. So 
for testing. Um, a lot of times I think, and you've brought it up because there's so much stigma and myth and a lot of the information is outdated that folks are getting around um, HIV and testing in general, um, that sometimes folks are nervous about coming in for a test. So that's something I hear from students a lot. Um, just what's it gonna be like when I go down there? Um, so I like that you touched on that it's anonymous. Their name doesn't have to be provided. Um, we don't require an appointment. So folks can just show up and there will be someone there to greet them and they might have to wait a few minutes um, for their turn. Um, when you chat with people in the room, say they just want to come for the educational piece and hear from you first before deciding to get the test. Is that okay too, JP? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll go through our risk assessment and at any time you're able to, you know, if you don't want to answer a question or if you're kind of just there for education, um, 100% that's totally okay. Um, kind of my job is to make sure that you're as comfortable as possible, kind of give you the information that you're looking for. Um, and if you're, if you, if you don't want to do the test, that's totally fine um, and if you do then that's what we're there for if folks are using injection drugs can you talk about the connection um, that inner community and options clinic has to the exchange program and what that looks like for students if they want to access your exchange yeah absolutely so um, at London inter community health center we do have some harm reduction kits that we can give out to community and those are just it's just new drug use equipment that you can use so that you don't have to share or try and reuse equipment that you're getting from other people just because that is a really high risk activity and we want to try to prevent any sort of transmission we can so we partner with the regional hiv aids connections counterpoint program they also have a safe injection site which is their care point program anybody is able to access them whether you're an injection drug user or somebody who just needs like needles for for diabetic injections or anything like that, um, you can just go there, ask for whatever it is that you need, um, and it's all completely anonymous as well. Um, so you can go there and get your new equipment so that you don't have to try and share with others. So JP, if folks are maybe still wanting to do a little bit of research on their own before they come in for the test, do you have any suggestions of different resources that they could check out online and read more about what we spoke about today? There's a really amazing organization uh, that's funded by Public Health Canada um, and it's called CATIE, it's C-A-T-I-E um, and it is a organization that is all about HIV and hepatitis C education. Uh, so you can find resources on all sexually transmitted infections, so gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, uh, HIV, hepatitis C. Uh, you can even do training videos to try and familiarize yourself a little bit more with any of the topics that you're interested in. And as well, it kind of gives you information on HIV transmission, on prevention, on treatment. And it's basically a one-stop shop for, for HIV information in Canada. Uh, it's, an, it's a website that we use all the time at the Options Clinic. And you can actually order resources from them for free and they'll ship them right to your house. If you want, they can, you can even order self-test kits from them too if you don't want to uh, go and test with somebody else. Uh, you can have them shipped to your house and uh, you can do it in your own space, in your own time, where it's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, as well, our Options Clinic website has a lot of information about HIV, about showing how the test works, and different ways that you can get connected to different services and, and resources if you need. As well, the Regional HIV AIDS Connection website is also a really good one uh, because they have a ton of information. And then as well, they also offer a lot of programming uh, surrounding HIV education and, and prevention and and uh, they're a really good resource and, and organization as well. So when you come in to do a rapid HIV test, either in one of the locations that JP was mentioning or on campus in our wellness center, this is what a test will look like. We wanted to do it on camera for you today so that you know what the process looks like and it feels maybe a bit less daunting um, or scary. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So uh, normally we would kind of go through a little bit of a risk assessment ahead of time. Uh, we'll collect a little bit of demographic information. So nothing that can really identify the test back to you, but like age, race, gender, that type of stuff, um, just because we have to. Um, and then we'll do a bit of a risk assessment just to determine if there's been any sort of potential exposures that you might have been exposed to, um, just to help determine kind of timeline and then as well just kind of contact tracing if we need to get to that point. Um, 
and then and then we get to this point. So it's a, this is a, our HIV testing kit here. Um, all it is is a prick of the finger. So I think most people think of an HIV test as a standard blood draw, where it's a venipuncture where they have to stick a needle in your arm, and it's quite invasive. Um, and you have to wait about a week for the results to come through, which can cause a lot of anxiety to people. So for our test, all it is is a prick of the finger. We draw a little bit of blood, um, and then I pour all of these little liquids into our little membrane unit here and um, they get absorbed and then either one or two blue dots appear. Uh, if it's one dot, it's a, it's a negative, uh, it's just a control. And then if it's two dots, then it's a positive and then that's when we would do some secondary testing and then get connected to treatment. Uh, and then the results come through in about one to two minutes. I just need a finger from you. Thank you. So we usually give a, a little massage just to get the blood flowing a little bit. And you're okay with little needle prick? Not gonna fit on me or nope, anything? Nope, nope, done it many times. That's all it takes. Apply some pressure there for me, please. And so now I pour all of these little liquids in. The red one is our dilution solution. Uh, so that's the important one. That's the one that's testing for the HIV antibodies. This blue one here is the color developer of the dot that's gonna appear. Uh, and then this one is just a clarifying solution to help it make it a little bit more clear for all of us. All right, so there's only one dot there in the membrane unit. Uh, so that just means that Leia is negative and that the test was successful. There was a second dot underneath that would show that it was reactive. Uh, so then we would do some secondary testing. Um, but as for right now, you are negative and there's nothing else that we need to do. As well, we also offer a uh, documentation sheet uh, for folks to. It'll have your anonymous code on it. So for anybody who maybe wants documentation for their own personal uh, records or something like that, uh, we're also able to provide that too. Okay, fantastic. Just to remind folks, the testing that will be provided at Vanshaw will be in the Wellness Center. So um, just a little bit of wayfinding because I know we have folks walking into different places. It's a big building. It's sometimes hard to find. But if you walk in the doors as if you're going to Fowler Kennedy and you turn to the left, usually JP is sitting um, around that desk area there and there's some chairs that you can wait in. Um, and they're usually about one and a half hour to two hour time blocks. And as you saw, the test is fairly quick and easy. So it's kind of an in and out thing. Well, we so appreciate you coming in today. Um, one thing that we ask all of our guests just to kind of humanize the process a little bit too because we know you're not just someone that works at the options clinic, you are a person, um, is we ask what your favorite food is. Would you be open to sharing that with us? For sure. It's sushi for me. Sushi? Yeah, I love sushi. Any seafood, but any? like specifically shrimp. Okay. Yeah. And any favorite sushi place? Because you know a lot of our students are new to London, and so we're getting them a few restaurant recommendations yeah. with every guest too. For sure. I think if you're going all you can eat, 168, mm -hmm. um, or heart sushi, um, if you're looking for something that's a little bit uh, higher end, I guess. Uh, Ozen's always a really good one. Ozen. Yeah. Great recommendation. Thanks, yeah. JP. We really appreciate it. And I hope that folks will go in and see, see JP throughout the year to get tested. And just remember, um, this is part of looking after your overall health. It's not a scary process. It doesn't cost you anything to come in and do this. So um, we really encourage you to, to get out and get tested. Thanks again. Thank you.